Welcome back to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple, please leave a five star rating and review. It supports the podcast and it doesn't cost you anything. Well, folks, let's start by taking a look at the price of Bitcoin. Bitcoin currently near $65,000, still consolidating. We may see a lot of sideways action bouncing between sixty dollars and $66,000, or Bitcoin could continue going down maybe to that $57,000 support level before it starts to bounce and go upwards. Uh, nevertheless, we're still on track to go to new all-time highs because we are in a bull market. We are in an uptrend. When in doubt, zoom out. Some important things to note is that the fear and greed index for Bitcoin is still at a greed level at 73. This may need to cool down a bit and maybe go to the neutral level, not necessarily go to fear, but more of neutral right in the middle at a 50. But um, no guarantee that it has to do that. But I personally think, given my experience being here in the market and seeing different market cycles, I think we need to get to a neutral standpoint of around 50 to 55 or even 60. Just get out of this greed zone, let things cool down. Um, and we continue to see there's a lot of outflows from GBTC. The selling continues, folks. Uh, here on Thursday, GBTC saw... $359 million in outflows, leading to $94 million in outflows for the entire fund group. Uh, some of the ETFs as well, spot ETFs from the big Wall Street players uh, saw outflows. And this is important to note that uh, the ETFs while they do bring a good amount of capital flowing into the market, uh, many of these ETFs and portfolio managers aren't going to rebalance the portfolios. So you're going to see some sell-offs, right? I'm not saying they're going to dump everything, obviously, but there will be rebalancing as, as you have a larger pool of investors, and especially with RIAs and these folks, they're, they're going to look to rebalance the entire portfolio. So something to keep in mind, and this is why you want to have your plan what prices are you taking point, uh, profits at because the bull market doesn't last forever we don't keep going up forever there will be the return of the bear market right um i still think we have another year to go um I, possibly we could see the blow off top this year or early 2025 We'll see what happens, but just have your plan and know what your cash out plan will be. Let's take a look at what are the top trending tokens on social media. Uh, here, this data is brought to you by Santiment. And if you'd like to get a premium account for Santiment, sign up with the link in the description. Uh, you can get a discount by using the code Thinking Crypto. Now, uh, the first coin is Badger, Badger Dow with high positive sentiment here. Coming in at number two is the meme coin, Dogecoin. Um, although its positive sentiment is not that high compared to its negative, positive is at 47%, uh, negative sentiment just at 34%. Now, Bitcoin Cash coming in at number three, surprisingly. Let's see, why is Bitcoin Cash uh, trending here? Bitcoin Cash has been discussed in the context of its performance compared to Bitcoin and Litecoin, as well as its community dynamics and potential future development. So it seems folks are a little negative because of the price action not being up to par, because here its positive sentiment is at 44.72%. It's negative at 41.19%. So not that much of a difference there. Uh, Ethereum comes in at number four with high positive sentiment. Uh, you get ample fourth. I don't know what this project is, but it comes in at six. Then you have Frax Share, which is FXS. And USDT, uh, Tether on Avalanche is trading. So it looks like USDT is doing something on the Avalanche blockchain. Pendle on Ethereum. I don't know what Pendle is, but it's trending at number eight. And it has a high positive sentiment. Quant, QNT, that comes in at number nine with high positive sentiment as well. And then you have Token Mac Network or the TON token that comes in at number 10. So those are your top trending tokens and their sentiments. Now, the big news of the day, which is the EU committees approve a ban on anonymous crypto transactions via hosted wallets. The recent anti-money laundering legislation imposes certain limits for cash transactions and anonymous cryptocurrency payments. So not great news. Let's break this down. And you know, world governments, we've been talking about it. World governments are not banning crypto, but they're going to put the guardrails in place. They're going to tax it. And we do have to figure out all the regulations. It's still early. Look, the EU passed the MICA bill. Um, you also have the UK passed crypto legislation. 
And we know folks like Elizabeth Warren want to imp implement things like this in the United States. Now, I think there's a balance here because on one hand, I understand the government's need to protect people. Uh, we, we don't want bad actors using this technology to do nefarious things, but we don't want draconian rules and laws, which uh, kills and, and stifles innovations and our freedoms, right? So there is a balance. And I think there's a lot of dialogue that's needed. The industry needs to work closely with the government. So a majority of the European Parliament's lead committees have approved a ban on cryptocurrency transactions of any value made through hosted crypto wallets. This comes amid the European Council and Parliament provisionally agreeing to expand parts of the European Union's anti-money laundering AML and counter-terrorist financing laws to cover the cryptocurrency market. According to an ex post by Patrick Breyer, a member of the European Parliament Pirate Party of Germany, a majority of the EU Parliament's led committees approved the new AML laws on March 19th. Breyer is one of only two members who voted against the ban on anonymous crypto payments. Gunnar Beck of Alternative Fear Duschelin, or Alternative for Germany, also voted against the ban. The ban applies specifically to hosted or custodial crypto wallets offered by third-party service providers, such as centralized exchanges. The new AML legislation applies certain limits for cash transactions and anonymous cryptocurrency payments. Under the new rules, anonymous cash payments over €3,000 will be banned in commercial transactions, and cash payments over €10,000 will be completely banned ban in business transactions. So um, it seems this is primarily for centralized exchanges. I don't know how they reinforce this for DeFi and decentralized exchanges. Uh, let's continue here to see if we can get more details. The new legislation is expected to be fully operational within three years from its entry into force. However, Dylan Eustace, an Ireland-based law firm, expects the legislation to become fully operational earlier. Many cryptocurrency networks function without permissionless environments, allowing anyone to create a cryptographic private key and granting unrestricted anonymous entry into the system, a fundamental principle of crypto. In a press release after the lead committees approved the legislation, Breyer outlined why he opposed the bill, saying it compromises economic independence and financial privacy. He said he considers the ability to transact anonymously a fundamental right. The crypto community has had a mixed response to the EU's regulatory measures. Some believe the new AML laws are necessary, while others fear they may infringe on privacy and restrict economic activity. Daniel Lodi Troster, host of the Sound Money Bitcoin podcast, underscored the practical hurdles and consequences of the recent legislation. He outlined the impact on donations and broader implications for cryptocurrency use, within the EU and express concerns over the stifling effects the rules have. So this is not fully in place entirely, right? Uh, there's a three-year window, but it's it, it has some legs here. So we have to push back on this. We'll see what some of the industry advocacy groups and lawyers and, and legal experts come in and say, but um, I think we have to find a balance. I understand the concern from the governments, right? I, I Look, I don't want some terrorists or somebody doing something that they shouldn't. But also, like I said, we don't want to stifle innovation and trample people's rights. And look, I know here in the United States, this would be something very hard for them to implement. In the EU, I'm not sure if many people are paying attention to, you know, here in the United States, we got the US Constitution. So, um, and there's three aspects of the government where there's checks and balances. So, We'll have to wait and see, but this is not a good sign that they're coming out and doing this. I don't know if they spoke to the crypto industry and folks who are in the EU about this. Um, so we'll have to wait till we get more details. I would love to hear companies in the EU, if they weighed in on this, if they spoke to the industry, but probably not. All right, let's move ahead. We got some funding news for the crypto market. Um, I love to see this news because it shows who's investing money, where they're putting that money, whether it's coins and projects or uh, companies building the infrastructure of the market. So we've been seeing a ton of Ethereum layer twos popping up, right? There's so many now. <laughs> um, you know, Coinbase has its own called Base and it's actually doing well. There's Polygon, uh, Arbitrum, many others as well. The Layer 2 infrastructure startup Expresso announced a $28 million in Series B funding led by A16Z Crypto on Thursday, 
Various Layer 2 related firms participated, including Polygon, Starkware, and Arbitrum Developer Off-Chain Labs. Expresso is largely known for building a shared sequencer for Layer 2s, where rollups can order and process transactions via a shared marketplace, rather than in their own execution environments. This could theoretically make Layer 2s more interoperable, though the program is still in testnet. So that's interesting. The funding follows $32 million uh, Expresso raise led by Greylock Partners and Electric Capital in 2022. Now, Morph raised $20 million in seed funding led by Dragonfly, co-founded by Cecilia Shush, I'm saying that right, uh, formerly of derivatives exchange Femex and Azim Khan. Previously at Gitcoin, Morph brands itself as a consumer-centric blockchain. Pantera, Foresight Ventures, and the Spartan Group are among those investors in the Layer 2, which is also in Testnet. The developer behind privacy-focused Layer 2 10, T-E-N, short for the encrypted network, raised $9 million led by R3, the block reported. Rails came out of stealth with a $6.2 million in seed funding this week for a self-custody-focused perpetuals exchange. The round saw participation from Slow Ventures, Round 3 Capital, CMCC Global, and Quantstamp, two of the project's three co-founders previously held leadership positions at the LGBTQ dating app Grinder. Interesting. Institution-focused derivatives infrastructure startup Kemet also announced $5 million in funding led by Further Ventures. Other notable fundraisers included uh, Zero Knowledge Infrastructure developer Succinth uh, announced a $55 million Series A led by Paradigm. Limited partners at A16Z will be available to invest in the VC's crypto seed and venture verticals through a general fund Andreessen is, is raising called Multiplexer. Railroad asset tokenization startup Mantra raised $11 million led by MENA-based Sharuk Partners. And finally, Sonarverse secured $7 million in funding led by Block Tower Capital for an on-chain data platform aimed at institutional investors. So folks, the capital keeps coming in. So if you got a great idea, you're an entrepreneur and innovator, this is the time. Put that pitch deck together and go out there to these uh, investors and see what you can get done. Now, we got some interesting news here around SWIFT. So that's the current banking messaging system, which has been around for a long time, outdated, slow, no instant settlement. But they have been uh, embracing blockchain um, since you know crypto has been on the rise. Companies like Ripple have called them out, right? Um, that payments are too slow and the future of payments is on the blockchain. Um, they have done work with Chainlink and so forth. Well, we got news here. SWIFT proposes a role for itself in a tokenized future on a unified ledger. Hmm. Put the technology you already have to new use, SWIFT advised the world. It had itself in mind. So it's trying to stay relevant, clearly, right? And embrace uh, payments on the blockchain as well as tokenization. But uh, will they be able to do it? I'm not sure because uh, it's SWIFT is made up of banks and uh, like many of these banks are, are very scared of being disrupted. And this is why you see Jamie Dimon and these guys coming out and fighting it. So the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication, SWIFT, has been watching the development of fintech carefully with a focus on its own future. After a variety of projects using new technologies, the pillar of the current international payment system has thrown its weight behind a unified ledger payment model. SWIFT looked in particular at tokenization and the shared ledger model, according to a post on its website. Common infrastructure could provide real-time balance to all participants in the shared ledger, it said. That's not to say messaging is unneeded. Swift was quick to add, shared ledgers are not well suited to carrying and storing high volumes of data due to the way data is synchronized across parties and the computing power is required. This is where a messaging layer fits in. Uh, for transactions to be frictionless, additional types of data also uh, need to be transferred to enable value-added services such as AML, compliance, sanction, screening, trade, and accounts receivable reconciliation. It Reconciliation, it continued. So guys, if you're wondering if crypto and blockchain, if you are still on the fence, is legit and, and, and this technology is legit, SWIFT 
right? Uh, this banking payments messaging system that's been around for years, they now have to jump on board and say, hey, yeah, we got to build this unified ledger, right? We got to look at tokenization. <laughs> uh, it's amazing to see them capitulate. And like I said, they've been working with Chainlink and doing much, much more. So there's not really any details on if it's a specific blockchain they're using and what it is, but let me continue here. Unified Ledger technology has been embraced by the International Monetary Fund and its XC platform and by financial institutions participating in the regulated liability network. The Bank for International Settlements has also endorsed this model. So um, you can definitely assume there's going to be CBDC as part of this and uh, how it's all going to run. But in 2022, it teamed up with fintech firm Symbiont in a pilot project to upgrade its information delivery to corporate clients through Symbiont's blockchain-driven assembly platform. SWIFT argued against the use of a unified ledger in a 2023 report in favor of SWIFT as a single point of access to different blockchain networks. Interesting. So maybe just maybe, uh, we may see SWIFT capitulate, partner with all these different blockchains, have interoperability where CBDCs are jumping across different blockchains, right? Um, because we're, we're going to be in a multi-chain world. So maybe they can save themselves here by integrating blockchain and crypto tech as well. So fascinating what's happening. And when I see things like this, it makes me even more bullish on this market. I see the old guard who was, you know, years ago poo-pooing this crypto and blockchain. Now is like, yeah, we got to test. We got to pilot. We got to tokenize. We got to we gotta bring different blockchains together. <laughs> Amazing what's happening, folks. Uh, I'm super bullish on this asset class. All right, folks, that's the news. Uh, don't forget to check out our sponsor, which is VeChain, which is one of the top layer one smart contract platforms for enterprises. And VeChain has been around for a while. They're working with BMW, PwC, uh, Walmart, China. They're working with Boston Consulting Group to build an, an amazing decentralized app ecosystem. Uh, they are highly sustainable, great speed and security. And I'm a VET token holder in full transparency. I have been holding this token since 2018. I'm very bullish on this project. That's why I uh, have them as a sponsor. So if you'd like to learn more about VeChain, check out the link in the description or go to vchain.org. Thank you for watching and listening, and I'll talk to you all later.